Okay. Uh, so this is a seven month old girl presented to the emergency department with a chief complaint of fever and upper respiratory tract infection for two days duration with difficulty of breathing for a few hours prior to presentation. Uh, she was uh, a product of late preterm, a set of a twin uh, a pregnancy. Uh, yeah, she was admitted to, uh, to the NICU uh, as a case of uh, RDS and she received one dose of Cervanta at birth. Uh, she was kept in invasive uh, mechanical ventilation for one day and then an IV for two weeks. Uh, she was uh, well till two days prior to presentation when she present, when she when the mother noticed her to have subjective fever responding to antibiotic, followed by progressive productive, productive cough uh, throughout the day, uh, associated with an increase of breathing, with decreased activity and snoring and uh, interrupted feeding. Uh, she has uh, contact with the COVID patient, her father. Uh, regarding the important negative. Uh, she did not have any apnea, choking, or facial congestion. She did not have any recurrent upper respiratory infection, witnessed foreign body. Uh, she did not have any contact with TB patient, uh, no uh, delayed passage of meconium. Okay, uh, regarding the neonatal, neonatal history, as mentioned, developmental history, uh, she has uh, minimal gross motor delay. She did not uh, able to sit or roll over. Uh, otherwise, other history are remarkable. She get vaccine uh, of fourth month according to the MOH protocol. Uh, Our presentation to the ER, uh, she was uh, generally uh, conscious and looks sick, respiratory distress, her vitals, she was tachycardic, tachypneic, maintaining her blood pressure and saturation in room air. Uh, she had uh, on and off grunting with the unequal uh, chest ex expansion with decreased air entry on the right side uh, by auscultation. Other system examination was unremarkable. Okay. Uh, upon, uh, upon the AR, uh, we, we request to do chest X-ray and you can appreciate here, there is a sign of pneumothorax. There is no, uh, pulmonary marking appreciated. And also here you can appreciate a, a collapsed lung and this is a, a, a part of the thymus. For, for, for that reason, uh, we uh, insert the chest tube in the ER. And you can uh, notice here, this is a post chest tube insertion, almost one hour after the insertion of the chest tube, uh, it shows uh, almost complete resolution, uh, only minimal uh, rem of, uh, of pneumothorax down in the, in the lower zone of the, of the right hand. Labs, which was done for her, uh, it, it shows, uh, that did not show any, any major uh, lab, lab uh, abnormalities. Her blood gas was maintained. Uh, so uh, we admit the patient, uh, with initial impression of acute hypoxic respiratory failure with right side is spontaneous pneumothorax, uh, secondary to uh, either viral or bacterial pneumonia, pneumonia, and keeping in mind congenital pulmonary airway malformation like CBAM and congenital lobar emphysema. So the plan of care was uh, supportive and uh, to secure the airway and uh, manage the air leak and uh, with antimicrobial coverage, diagnostic workup and multidiscipl multidisciplinary team. After insertion of the chest tube, uh, the patient was uh, having a worsening of her respiratory status for which we uh, intubated her and we kept her on conventional mechanical ventilation uh, with the high setting, her blood gas all through was maintained. So she was admitted on 9 of September, chest tube was inserted in the ER, she was sedated, ventilated, just a tube, uh, sorry, uh, sedated, ventilated, and just CT was requested, keeping in mind the congenital lung malformation. Uh, she was hemodynamically supported by inotropes uh, with, uh, and covered with antibiotics. Okay. 
uh, on the third day of admission, she developed the signs of uh, ARDS in form of uh, worsening of her oxygenation, despite of high setting of uh, high of IO2 and uh, high beep of conventional mechanical ventilation. Uh, we requested for her chest X-ray and we noticed that there is a, a low lung volume with the worsening of aeration on the main bilaterally and mainly on the right side, uh, the right lung. Uh, we measured her OSI, it was 14, which represent uh, a severe ARDS. For, for that, uh, we, we, we shifted her to high, high frequency oscillator. Uh, with the FiO2 100, I mean 17 delta pressure, 45 of the frequency seven. So we are dealing right now. We are dealing with a, with a severe ARDS with possibility, high possibility of uh, pulmonary interstitial emphysema versus uh, necrotizing pneumonia, and uh, we uh, we are uh, putting a goal of therapy to provide her with uh, keep uh, provide her with deep sedation and, and uh, paralytic agents. Uh, we uh, optimize his, her hemodynamics, hemodynamic support, respiratory support uh, with uh, permissive hypoxia and, hyper, and permissive hypercardia, in addition to septic control. After, stabili and after stabilization of the patient, we are looking to uh, do a diagnostic workup, which is uh, HSTT. Again, multidisciplinary team, the core of the team was the BQ. And uh, we, uh, we involved the pulmonologist, BD surgeon, uh, ID, and cardiologist. Regarding the pulmonary, uh, the pulmonologist, their impression is uh, right sided spontaneous pneumothorax, most likely secondary to viral pneumonia. And they kept in mind also uh, congenital lung malformation. That's why they, 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 they request a respiratory viral panel. And they consider testing for uh, Bertasis and they request a CT chest, <clears throat> which is requested by the BICO team already. Uh, uh, ECHO was uh, done and it was uh, that shows uh, non uh, major defects. Okay. So, again, as a hospital course, on 11 of September, she developed severe ARDS with OSI 14. And here you can notice the chest X-ray. Uh, at that moment, we shift, we shift the patient to high frequency oscillator, and we kept in mind uh, the ECMO. Uh, we discussed it with the head of the of the ECMO in the Riyadh, and uh, unfortunately, yeah, you know, uh, there is a limitation for us for this patient, specifically the weight. She did not meet the criteria of ECMO. Okay. After. Uh, three days, uh, the patient was improved on oscillator. Her OSI uh, reduced to seven. Uh, so uh, we consider her uh, as a mild, uh, mild ARDS. So the sitting was gradually uh, adjusted. Uh, and then after, a while, after that, we, we, we shipped the patient to conventional mechanical ventilation with the IO to 70% and BEEP7. Okay. Okay. Here you can notice in this X-ray after after shifting the patient to conventional, uh, this X-ray shows uh, looks like a cystic lesion. This increased the possibility for us. I mean, uh, when we notice this X-ray, and increased the possibility of uh, cystic uh, malformation of the lung. We request the CT, and you can notice here. Uh, here we uh, a, lot, a multi multi cyst with walled and lined uh, cyst uh, in the upper and in the middle and the lower zone of the of the right lung. Uh, also here you can notice uh, a sign of uh, BIE a line with a dot and the lucency around the pulmonary uh, pulmonary artery. Okay, this is the sequence of the of the uh, CT chest, and this is another view which shows consolidation of the upper uh, bar uh, upper loop of the of the lung. This is another one. This is a multicystic lesion represented in the in the chest CT. So after the CT, the 
embryon was uh, severe necrotizing pneumonia with possibility of underlying congenital cystic lesion for follow up and uh, for, for, for follow up. Yes. So, again, the embryon is acute hypoxic respiratory failure with uh, right side spontaneous pneumothorax, most likely secondary to severe necrotizing pneumonia and uh, other uh, congenital malformation to be ruled out. Uh, with severe necrotizing pneumonia for the first presentation for this patient, this ra raised the possibility of primary immune deficiency. So we, we uh, asked the, for immunology uh, consultation and they request uh, lymphocyte subset and uh, the others. We uh, discovered that the, there is severe uh, reduction in CD3 and na uh, natural, color, natural killers. Uh, which uh, going with primary immune deficiency uh, with high possibility of a skid. So uh, the patient was started in IVIG and the prophylactic antibiotics. Okay, again, uh, on 15th of uh, September, uh, the patient was started in OGT feed. The patient was already on, on the TBN previously. Uh, she developed a clinical sepsis and we know this patient is uh, immune deficient. So we, uh, we deal with the patient uh, seriously, and we uh, upgraded the antibiotics. Uh, at 19th of September, uh, we weaned the sedation gradually, and we prepared the patient for extubation. Inotropes was stopped, mechanical ventilator setting was weaned, and shifted to uh, pressure support, uh, CBAB to pressure support. On 20, uh, 22 of September, the patient was extubated to high flow nasal cannula, uh, then uh, subsequently, uh, the high flow nasal canal was stopped and the patient was charged on, uh, on 30th of uh, September with OBD follow up. And this is the x ray uh, post extubation. Uh, it shows uh, most of the cystic lesion which, which was noticed previously. It was not clear right now in this x ray. Again, the duration of uh, hospitalization, I mean, the uh, ventilation, it was 18 days. Uh, she was uh, on conventional mechanical ventilation for two days, then the patient developed severe ARDS. So they shifted to high frequency for three days. After that, uh, she, she, she get resolving of ARDS, uh, shifted to conventional mechanical ventilation and kept for eight days. Uh, after that, uh, the patient was extubated to high flow and uh, on high flow kept for five days. Okay. Uh, we reviewed the literature and we, we found that uh, some studies talking about the persistent pulmonary air leak in pediatric intensive care unit. Uh, this study was uh, published on uh, 2022. Uh, this is uh, this study was uh, done in the uh, Department of Pediatric uh, Children Medical Center of Israel. Uh, this is a retrospective uh, cohort study of all BCO admitted children uh, aged 0 to 18 years diagnosed with the pneumothorax complicated by persistent air leak between January 2005 and February 2020. Uh, it was conducted at the tertiary center. So the aim of, the, of this study uh, to describe the etiology, clinical characteristic management strategies, prognost prognostic factors, and outcome of all cause uh, persistent air leak and children hospitalized in the ICU. Uh, they reviewed the chart of 788 patients who uh, has pneumothorax admitted to their BCO, and they found 38 patients 38 patients out of uh, 788 who has persistent air leak more than 48 hours. They exclude two and they remain with 36 patients. The most common cause of persistent air leak uh, in those patients is bacterial pneumonia, which represents 56%. And uh, the others is acute uh, respiratory distress represent for 31%. Uh, both surgical uh, represent 11% and spontaneous pneumothorax 3%. Uh, 
uh, they uh, describe the general outline of uh, ventilator ma management. Uh, yeah, they, they mention try to wean uh, the patient from positive pressure ventilation as soon as possible and use minimal inspiratory time, avoid high peak inspiratory pressure and set the, avoid high peak of uh, inspiratory pressure uh, set the ventilatory rate at lowest uh, level tolerated and expiratory tidal volume is limited to six to eight ml per kg. Uh, and they mention also when the conventional mechanical ventilation fails, you can use the high frequency oscillators. Uh, they, uh, the, the outcome, uh, the mortality uh, and bilateral air leak are common among the ARDS patient. Uh, the mechanical ventilation also uh, most all ARDS patient uh, are ventilated. Uh, also, uh, the high frequency oscillators was applied for ARDS patient rather than the non-ARDS patient was zero. Um, here uh, in this chart, you can notice the, the air leak duration, the persistent air leak duration was Long, longer was prolonged when, I mean, longer when compared to non-ARDS causes. Uh, as a conclusion of this study, the persistent air leak secondary to ARDS associated with long air leak duration and mortality. Uh, the other etiologies like bacterial pneumonia was associated with favorable outcome, commonly resolving with conservative management. Uh, they uh, recommend for further study uh, as uh, needed to compare different management strategies and persistent, persistent air leak addressing etiology sub subgroups. This is another study. This is uh, uh, a case report for uh, adult who's 30 years old, uh, a case of uh, trauma with, bilat with uh, bilateral pneumothorax secondary to chest trauma. They uh, manage the patient, they insert chest tube bilaterally and uh, they start the patient in conventional mechanical ventilation initially, but unfortunately the conventional uh, mechanical ventilation was failed because of uh, they are not able to maintain his uh, oxygenation. Uh, after that, they shift the patient to high frequency oscillators and the patient was improved and discharged after the sixth day of, uh, of admission. Uh, they they uh, review the patient again after the six months, and the patient was returned to his baseline. So uh, this increase, yeah, I mean, I mean uh, uh, an increase focusing on uh, early usage of high frequency oscillators among uh, air leak syndrome. And this is the another another study uh, done for a neonate. Uh, they are uh, looking for the role of high frequency ventilator and uh, it's a in the prevention of the air leak syndrome. And they mention uh, the, the main uh, strategy for preventing the air leak is gentle ventilation. And gentle ventilation is usually held by the high frequency oscillators, uh, providing the patient with minimal uh, tidal volume and sobra physiological rate, this will, uh, will uh, prevent, according to what's written here, provide adequate gas exchange with, uh, with uh, they are considered to, uh, to have the potential to reduce the risk of air leak syndrome. But there is no studies uh, in the neonate uh, Provi uh, yeah, uh, provide us with uh, preventing the new onset of uh, air leaks. And thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed, for your presentation. Um, would like to thank the audience and the um, Dr. Reed and the organizer all for this opportunity and for opening the mic for question and discussions.
thank you, Dr. Ayman and Dr. Mohammed, for um, this presentation and sharing with us your experience with this challenging case. Um, uh, and uh, we're happy about uh, her outcome, uh, though the presentation was quite uh, significant, severe. So what do you recommend from um, the literature review and uh, um, the experience that you went through? Um, and when you have the patients with air leak syndrome, so how you stratify them and uh, um, which way you will go with in regards to the mechanical ventilation, conventional versus high frequency? Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Aida, for your question. Very important. Uh, and Dr. Mohammed, you can uh, share with me the answer. Uh, basically, uh, um, uh, regarding this case, it was uh, more challenging, complicated than the uh, summary of this presentation. As her initial presentation, she came with spontaneous pneumothorax, which was developed a few hours prior to the presentation, uh, based on the uh, description of the mother, after which she was uh, mainly dealt by the emergency team and just a tube inserted by the surgery, and they were dealing like she's fine and uh, oxygenation maintained and gas was, gas exchange was maintained and the questioning uh, is she a floor patient or ICU patient but subsequently when she declined herself down the stairs and the emergency uh, she was a real candidate for ICU admission and the, the subsequent uh, deterioration and ventilation uh, situation uh, came up afterwards uh, after a few hours from the presentation. Uh, in regard of our practice and the uh, literature review, uh, from at least from my uh, humbled uh, experience that I'm unfavorable of uh, high frequency, early administration of high frequency for those patients with signs of uh, air leak, whether persistent or controlled uh, as a gentle mode of ventilation to maintain adequate gas exchange and uh, uh, decreasing the, uh, the uh, I mean, emphasizing on the lung protective strategies, permissive hypercapnia, permissive hypoxia, and uh, avoidance of barotrauma, volutrauma that might be provided. Again, the literature is not con uh, totally conclusive regarding that manner, it, it's according to the uh, convenience and experience of the intensivist in charge. But uh, from our practice or uh, from uh, my point of view and regarding of that matter, high frequency is very favorable out, uh, uh, modality of uh, uh, of choice regarding the ventilation of air leak, especially if it is used early. Uh, so, uh, and this patient, what was uh, the main major problem for her was not the gas exchange at all. Her ventilation was maintained all through, only the oxygenation issue that she uh, uh, sustained persistent hypoxia, uh, regardless of the FI2 requirement on the conventional. Uh, and the oscillator fixed that issue. And uh, regarding her monitoring of OSI, the uh, VBD and the um, uh, CO2 detector with the oscillator was more convenient to, to deal with and to, to monitor her um, uh, situation. Uh, luckily, she got out of that uh, ARDS and uh, uh, she ended up with um, um, a reasonable uh, outcome. Thank you again for your presentation, and we can hear from the audience regarding their uh, experience and their point of uh, view. I would uh, add to that is, um, it depends as well uh, which way to go with the ventilation and the context of the case. So what is actually the main reason for the pneumothorax? Um, are we dealing really with very um, bad interstitial lung disease um, or, or, or not? Uh, so as you mentioned that uh, patients with ARDS, they were having higher um, uh, risk for pneumothorax and uh, higher uh, morbidities and uh, definitely high frequency is the way to go with them. Uh, gentle ventilation and that may work with the air leak syndrome, uh, but this cannot be um, applied to the majority of cases where uh, low setting of conventional, conventional uh, ventilation can be achieved and can manage the main problem. 
um, it would be interesting really to to see as well what is the most common cause of pneumothorax in uh, the BICU. Is it really related to um, ERDS or um, and other factors, uh, um, especially uh, traumatic uh, um, um, or complications from from uh, ventilation uh, and conventional ventilation as well. Um, so that will be really a point to review. The floor is open for any comment or any question from the colleagues. Uh, I think uh, we need to un unmute the uh, participant who wants to participate. Um, uh, Dr. Elham, but I'm not really sure how to unmute you. If you can help me, uh, Rose, in this. They can uh, unmute themselves, Dr. Thank you. Thank yeah, Dr. you very Elham, much. Go for, ahead. Thank you very much for the for the presentation and great job on, on the on the patient also and great outcome. I just wanted to ask um, the uh, regarding uh, two things. First, on the conventional ventilations, what were your maximum settings uh, reach? And secondly, at the general question, do you think high frequency oscillatory ventilation and high frequency jet are sort of created the same for air, air leak? I don't have a, a experience with jet ventilation, but isn't jet ventilation this a bit different and better for, for uh, like interstitial emphysema than high frequency oscillatory ventilation? And um, would the map make a difference? Like also, I think in the presentation, if I paid attention, the map was 17. Do you think if you are needed higher map, like in the 20s and more, you would end up with worse air leak and not better air leak? Uh -huh. And my, th my yes. third issue is the ECMO thing. Uh, how do you transport patients to, to rehab on uh, with the ECMO requirements? Because the transport here would be the biggest issue unless you can transport an ECMO. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Elham, for your questions. Thanks. Starting with the question regarding the uh, maximum settings the patient required, he required a map of almost 27, and the plateau pressure was fluctuating, reaching up 29 to 30. And uh, um, yeah, as you mentioned, the, the vicious cycle of increasing MAP and causing more air leak or uh, uh, settling down with the MAP and controlling the air leak, that was the major issue, the major uh, challenge to, to do. Uh, to take at that point of time. Regarding the high frequency jet or uh, the oscillator, our experience and our availability of the oscillators only, uh, I have been dealt with the jet in a, in a, in a workshop only, and uh, I have seen, um, uh, seen uh, lectures about it, but I didn't, didn't use it on a real patient myself. Uh, the available one that we have is the um, uh, sensor medics um, oscillator only. Uh, for the ECMO issue, maybe uh, Dr. Mohammed skipped the details of that discussion when the patient declined herself before shifting to the um, oscillator and she was not on Iantrop back then I had a, a phone call with the uh, colleagues in King Fahad Medical City uh, uh, regarding the ICMO is she a candidate is she uh, ever uh, um, uh, transferable before declining further before she becoming critically sick and uh, and uh, cannot be moved uh, is she a real candidate for that and the discussion um, uh, she was not a candidate for many reasons number one the weight her weight was below 10 kg and their cutoff limit was 10 kg this is one thing the other thing they do uh, request a, a clear immune, immune uh, uh, immunodeficiency background and we raised the suspicion of immunodeficiency because uh, she had that severe um, uh, uh, severe illness as a first time presentation so uh, her immunodeficiency workup was pending at that time. Additionally regarding the neurological status one of the requirements or eligibility of ECMO uh, to have normal uh, neurological status uh, confirmed this patient has delayed compared to her twin, her twin was advanced and across motor uh, socialization and all. So she was a bit delayed, not much, 
but we are not really sure about her neurological status, immunodeficiency status, and uh, she was at the edge of declining. So uh, that discussion was basically if we are out of options before we run into the critical zone where we where patients cannot be transferred is she a candidate or not and she was not eligible to start with i hope i answered your question thank you very much again Any other questions from the audience? Is uh, any patient suffer from severe chest injury caused by air leak ventilator? Uh, is it uh, the effect with him is reversible or irreversible? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the question. I didn't get it. Uh, if I'm getting you correct, you mean uh, if it's if the ARDS is reversible or not. I did yes. not get it that much. But yeah, because the cause was infection, basically. Her cause of ARDS was um, infection, uh, mm -hmm. control of sepsis, control of infection, and treatment of uh, chest infection by um, uh, high gun antibiotics, ventilation strategies, all of this uh, contributed to the uh, resolution of the ARDS and subsequent resolution of the air leak. Uh, again, the patient did not have persistent air leak as per definition, but she has a spontaneous uh, pneumothorax that it took a while to uh, to to resolve uh, by the intervention. I mean, great, right. right. thank you, doctor. Uh, second, uh, what's uh, what is the first line antibiotic that you was given with the patient for fast recovery? Patient was uh, on uh, third generation cephalosporin. She was on strixone, vancomycin at presentation, subsequently upgraded to merapinib. Uh, antiviral was uh, not available at that time. COVID, I mean, was not available at that time. And her PCR came to be negative many times. So antiviral was not added. Uh, her cultures and tracheal swabs did not grow any organism. Mm -hmm. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you.